Welcome to DeFi on Sui. If you're new to DeFi, this is an introductory video just to give you a little bit of grounding, go over some depths, and then we'll start to go through the specific depths in the following videos, but definitely watch this one first. So firstly, here we are at DeFi Llama. DeFiLlama.com, this shows the total value locked on a particular blockchain and in the entirety of crypto itself. So TVL, total value locked, is the total amount of money or crypto or tokens that are locked and actually being used inside decentralized finance applications, such as in trading pools or maybe as a borrow and lend market, like you put your SUI tokens into a DAP and then you go and borrow some USDC and then you go and buy the girlfriend some nice flowers or whatever it is you want to do. Here, this shows us a decent amount of TVL, almost 140 billion. And here we can see the previous cycle of how much DeFi value there was. It was quite sizable, but we won't go over that today. Long story short, a lot of this was in what was called the Luna or Terra ecosystem, and that completely imploded. Then we went through a bear market, which is completely normal. Bull, bear, bull. After this will be a bear market. So we can see that the TVL has been growing steadily, very steadily, and it's been rocketing actually. And the master chain is called Ethereum in terms of the amount of most amount of value. I would say probably the next biggest one would be Solana, but I haven't verified it. Could be another EVM potentially, but certainly in terms of actual transactions being used and number of users, it's 100% Solana. But specifically what we're looking at is Sui. So Sui has been growing exponentially and that's fantastic. If we scroll on down at this point, we can see which protocols have the most amount of TVL. So Sui Lend will be covering that. We'll be covering all these big ones to be perfectly honest. But basically, if you can see a protocol in here, if you click on it, it will quite often give you enough information to maybe make you take a concentrated bet on something or whatnot. So the Sui Lend team, they're the same team that made Sol Lend, which rebranded to save on Solana. So they are kind of OG in the space. And here it will link to like the website and Twitter and a whole lot of other stuff. Sometimes you'll see all sorts of information with relation to an audit and that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you can go to the docs specifically, maybe like the website, and then you can go and find if there's actually been an audit. So if we come here as an example, we can't see any docs immediately. So we'd probably need to launch the app and then we need to see if we can find docs, maybe at the bottom here. Quite often it's like this. Other times people don't actually put that information out there. Probably gonna be asking what is an audit. So I'll just type it in here and we'll see if we can find that information. So to understand an audit, first we have to understand what is a smart contract. Smart contracts are code, it's programmable code. So this is far easier to illustrate like this. Let's say you have $1,000 worth of SUI and you go and put it into this application, which we'll cover in depth another time. You can then go and borrow, if you want to, $700 worth of USDC. It has a loan to value ratio of 70%. If you want to, you can borrow that amount. Now, if the price of SUI goes down in value, then there's not enough collateral and therefore essentially the, your position is insolvent. So the way it would work is the SUI would have to be sold via a smart contract for USDC and it would have to automatically pay down the loan. There's no person at the end, there's no dev or community manager going and doing anything. It's all done via smart contracts. And if a smart contract is done very, very well, things will move very, very smoothly. If it's not done very well, like has been done in the past, then somebody, a very skilled developer, can go and do what's called a hack or an exploit. They can go and find a bug and they can potentially withdraw people's funds or mint extra tokens, etc. So a smart contract is necessary to use DeFi and not every blockchain has smart contracts. As an example, XRP, as far as I'm aware, does not have smart contracts. Bitcoin does not have smart contracts. Ethereum was the first smart contract layer. Solana has smart contracts and Sui has smart contracts. So what an audit does is an audit goes and checks all the code that's provided to the auditing company. And they want to see if there's anything that can be exploited. So when a project has an audit, this is a very good sign. It does not indicate that there'll be no exploits possible, but it's a good sign. And ideally it will have multiple audits, especially as TVL grows. Right now, as we can see, there's hundreds of millions of dollars in this. 575 million, and you're essentially trusting the developers that their code is good. That is the nature of DeFi. 
there's no insurance available to protect against your position in case of an exploit. Insurance was available in the previous cycle, and there's a couple of insurance protocols around now, but they didn't really do well. They basically probably all went bankrupt by having to pay out more than the funds they actually had from premiums. I do think insurance will come again, but at present, it's not really super used or super relevant. So when you're using a DAP, you want to go and check the actual audit. This one's had two different audits. Once again, I just want to remind you that the code could have been updated and there's no secondary audit. So we have no way to fully trust things, but it is a good indicator. The audits with Sui Lambda would be quite intense because they're holding your funds, but other more simple DAPs like hop.ag also require audits as well. This is where we could go and take say $10,000 worth of USDC. It's gonna find the best route. And if you're familiar with Solana, you're familiar of course with Jupiter, jupe.ag. It finds the best route to give you the most number of tokens. And then we've got other DeFi dApps out there that aren't just swaps. This is Bluefin. Bluefin is a perp stacks. So if you go to Bybit, you can go and leverage up a position or leverage a position by putting a short on it. And this is a similar aspect. You can buy or short a particular token. This would be ETH as an example, but there are other pairs here as well. Like as an example, if you put a, a long on Sui with say 5X leverage, you'd be up five times around nine, so like 45%. Of course, if you don't understand trading, if you don't understand perps, stay away from perps until you're quite familiar and don't just dive into these. This is a whole lot of green in the market, which is pretty cool to see. The other thing that DeFi has is pools. So we click on pools and we can go concentrated pools or stable pools. We'll cover this in more detail, as I mentioned, but you can go and provide your liquidity. You can go and provide, say, some blue and some sui into this liquidity pool, and then people will trade your blue for their sui, or they'll trade their sui for your blue. In other words, you're generating revenue based on the amount of trades that happen. There's something very, very epic over on Solana called Meteora. Maybe in the future, something like that will exist over here doesn't at present, but as an example, this APR, because of their very decent rewards, the daily rewards, it is essentially printing a whole lot of money. And that's one opportunity which you may want to get involved in. Now there's actually plenty of different DeFi things out there, but these are some of the major ones. If we go back to DeFi Llama and go back to the Sui blockchain, scroll on down, you can see some that have a sizable amount of money. Ideally, they'll have the category next to them, so this one would be lending, but it doesn't have lending. Then Certus has a DEX, liquid staking, lending, uh, yield aggregator. We'll cover all these in future tutorials. One other thing that I think is very important is just how to read this. I will do as many tutorials as I can, but uh, ultimately a new DEP will come out, it'll gain traction and I won't have time to cover it. So if we have a look here at Sui Lend, you can see fees and revenue. If this is available, this is fantastic you definitely want to see a decent amount of revenue that goes to the team. That way they can hire very competent individuals as devs because a very good dev will probably be on like $250,000 a year, plus they'll have equity and token allocation, all that sort of stuff. Then you need really good infrastructure, good servers, etc. So if revenue is really, really pumping along in the last 24 hours, that's great to see. If you see something that has no revenue, then hopefully they've got a bit of a runway. But ideally, if you're looking for the next cool DeFi dApp, if they don't have a token already, and if they've got good revenue, that could potentially be something very worth getting into. I'll just come back to overview here, just so I can show you a couple of really big ones, like Aave. Aave's revenue in the last 24 hours is 120,000. Massive amount of TVL, 22 billion. Huge amount in fees. And this is why they are basically the goats of lending. They already have a token. I think it came out around 2017. But this is just what I'm trying to illustrate where you can find value in this sort of stuff. The final thing before we actually dive into the individual tutorials, just keep in mind, if you're new to DeFi, just take it slow. There's plenty of learning that you need to do. If you have a net worth of $10,000, you may just want to play with like $1,000 or $500 to start off with as you jump into different liquidity pools and borrowing and lending. But as I said, we'll cover everything specifically in each video. In the next video, we're going to dive into the world of farming with Bluefin. I'll catch you in that video.